Hello guys, Nato Ace here and this is going to be my review of E3 2017, the big 3 conference. So, how I do this review is one thing is that, in this, the whole point is presentation. The conference is the presentation, did the viewer catch the eye from the big 3? So I can't I disregard the games. So we're gonna take away the games here because even um Cassius from Good Nintendo actually said a good tweet on the Twitter is that if there's a game you like, you'll always gonna support it. Like Call of Duty, I know it's a good game, a lot of people like it, it's a good makes people activation money. But for me personally, I really don't give a crap about Call of Duty and the first person shooter, not my cup of tea. That's the reason. The whole point of the review I'm doing of who won E3 2017 based on the conference itself, not the games. Because in the end of the day, there's gonna be a game for everyone. That's really it. Like, I I like Moose Out game, I enjoy them, not a lot of people do. Some people may like, like I said, maybe Skyrim or Fallout. I don't give a crap about it. So that's the reason there. So with that, I'm gonna start with Microsoft conference. So basically, it's a live conference. Nice, but the, what the thing what they showed up? First of all, the game they showed did look like I have to say 90% for the gamer. There's a game for like I said 90%. They had their racing game. They got their MMORPG. They showed uh, shooters. I think. Heck, they even showed. It wasn't on the Sony conference, it was on the Microsoft Dragon Ball Fighter Z. And from what I saw on YouTube video when people were trying the game out, they were using the Xbox One controller. So either Microsoft say, hey, developer for Dragon Ball Z Fighters, can you can you showcase it using our console rather than Sony? Then they said sure, probably money, whatever. Whatever doing back deal, behind the deal, I don't know, but Nako Bandai believe hey, you know, it's better on the Xbox One than Sony. Because again, mostly Sony, you got more variety game. So that's something interesting there. Like I said, the reason I say 90%, where the, where's the party game? Where's the, well, anime game, JRPG? See, not so much, but 90%, it is something for everyone. And then the best part is they finally introduced the Xbox One X. And it's not just a trailer. Phil Spencer and some other people talked about it. They were on stage, again good, explaining about what the conference is. And the, the key point there is people on the conference, explanation. And I'll, I'll explain it later why on a different conference. So of course, not only that, they talked announcement. That's good. The announcement they talked about is that they coming, of course, still coming this year, 2017. I'm guessing November. They announced Xbox One will be compatible with the original Xbox. Believe it or not, I have some Xbox game that I actually bought for the 360. I play them. <laughs> Excuse me. I got it for cheap. That's the reason. Now maybe I can once again try to play them. Easy peasy. Awesome. So. I have to give the Microsoft conference, this one, believe it or not, an 8 out of 10. Like, whoa, 8 out of 10, but you're not, you don't really like Microsoft that much. Yeah, true. But like I said, it's not about the game. They showed variety of games. But the presentation they did was, there were people on stage explaining their games, some of them. They also explained, hey, we have an update. There's an update for the console. We explained about the console. Unfortunately, they didn't talk about the price. They talk about when the date is, which is somewhere in November, but not the price. They had to do that in a post show, which is shouldn't done in a conference. They probably had to give it a higher score. So I have to give it an eight out of ten. Because again, it's not about the games. The presentation was there. There was the information I got. I understand what they're doing, and they show what the future of the console. Moving from there is Sony. You know I'm a Sony fan. I love the games. They have the variety. There's always something for me for Sony. That said, unfortunately, the Sony conferences, let's just say it's sort of, 
a live action semi Nintendo Direct E3 special. If basically, if you remember Nintendo since 2013, they never stopped doing a live conference. Uh, that'll be a different story. I think I think I talked about it in the past, but it'll be a different video. Yeah, there have been some a lot of in, let's just say uncomfortability from Nintendo that they can't do a conference in LA. They could do one on Japan, but not on LA. Whatever. So it started out something good, it was something different. A group of people playing some uh, well I'm just gonna say ancient music, pretty catchy, and it preludes to Uncharted 4 Legacy, which is a spin-off to Uncharted 4. Play as Nadine or Chloe and Nadine. I mean, maybe I mean it shouldn't be like a DLC, but you know what, whatever. Expansion, that's fine. So, with that said, let's start with the game. The game is good. Then Sean Layfield or Layton, Sean Layton, I think the name, the new president of Sony Computer Entertainment of America, basically just said, "Welcome, enjoy the show." Then he left. Then from there, sadly, is trailer after trailer after trailer after trailer after trailer after trailer. Someone new that I didn't see catch, such as Monster Hunter World, a game that's sort of popular in the Nintendo console for a strange reason. This was for the PlayStation 4. It sure gets on the PlayStation 4, but it's also on PC and Xbox. I don't know what the deal is. Kind of weird, but you know what? I'm not really Monster Hunter fun. Fat. They showed some new game, Shadow of Colossus Remake, not really that new, but I don't know why Shadow of Colossus Remake, maybe according to Sean, there's something more to it. And then, sadly also, they showed a game that already been shown before. Like I said, Uncharted Legacy, or Legacy Adventure, that's shown, uh, well, granted it was shown in the PlayStation Experience, maybe, maybe, but to some extent, you gotta understand the PlayStation experience is like the part two of E3. That's all I can say. They showed God of War. More God of War, more story, more gameplay. He's gone. It's like a Grand Theft Auto meet zombie game meet Grand Theft Auto, I guess. Again, been shown that last year. The, some of the trailer they showed, there's already been seen. And some of them are gonna be new. But the problem with that conference. And unfortunately, it was even it was 50 minutes, and the reason why is it was just she after Uncharted, Sean came out, the trailer, 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 and in the end, we just said thank you for watching. Here's the season reel. So I'm like, that's your conference now. You're just gonna show a trailer. I mean, do you expect people to watch PlayStation at live because of it? I mean, the, the, the point with the conference is. Is that you introduce the game to tell the future of your company. Not trailer, you show games. And then for some of them, they should talk about the games a bit. And they kinda did it. They just trailer, 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 trailer. I'm like, what? I mean the only surprising part in the end what they did was when they showed the last game was Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4, coming 2018, along with God of War. Shadow Claws. Yeah, a lot of the games are 2018, but that's not really a problem because, like I said, the rule of the conference is to show games starting from June 2017 all the way to May 2018. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of a conference. That's your plan. And it's just trailer, 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 VR trailer, 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 trailer. So, yeah, I mean, the only surprise, like I said, was Spider Man, and then Shark came out said, Thank you for watching, Caesar Roll, and then after the Caesar Roll, they went back to the Spider-Man trailer, and they said, "Oh, come on, let's go, Miles." So again, I did talk about in the Sony PlayStation one, which is the Spider-Man lore, Miles Morales. It's Spider-Man for the Ultimate Universe. I don't know what they're doing with this story. I don't know what's going on with Marvel, but so they kind of pulled the Avengers thing with an end credit. So. People kind of missed it, so I mean, gotta get props to them, but unfortunately, <laughs> even though the games were good, you didn't talk. There was no talking. Which is Shane, it was Shane, Sean, I think that's Shane, Sean, and then that was it. He came back, thank you, left again. 
So with that, I have to give the Sony conference this time, man. I hate you because I'm a Sony supporter. I gotta give it a 6 out of 10. Reason is, nobody was talking about it. Yeah, you make showing good games great, but you're also showing trailer that the game's already been announced before. There was no information about the game. Oh, well, blah, 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 blah. Like, you have to watch PlayStation. If you have to watch PlayStation Alive, I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. I can understand, but it's ridiculous. I mean, there was no people, which is only shot. That's only what? It's only shot. Yeah, the six because of the surprise in the end with Miles Morales. That's all I can say. So, fortunately, Sony, you disappoint me. Trailer, 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 trailer. I was so hyped. You broke my hype. Trailer, 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 trailer. Uh, so the last one is the Nintendo Spotlight. Okay, so it's 30 minutes before worry. <coughs> but Reggie did talk about it on YouTube on Patreon with Jeff Keighley. Reggie said the whole point of the Spotlight is, oh, it's um appetizer to what you're gonna see live at Treehouse. Okay, I can get it. Showcase your game more about it. I get that. Fine. So I said, let's see what the <coughs> Spotlight uh, Spotlight is all about. Reggie talks about the Switch. He basically just reiterate re what the Switch is about. It's just a mobile console. You can bring it anywhere. You can take a dump while playing. Play Mario Kart 8 while taking a dump. So with that, they show trailers. Well, the first the elephant in the room, Super Mario Odyssey trailer. But that is the main feature for E3 2018. 2017. For Nintendo, it's Super Mario Odyssey. Oh, uh, notice. The 27 October, not 17. Uh, I best have done date there, so my mistake. It's the 27th. There you go. But anyway, back to the spotlight. Even though it was short, surprisingly, there were information and there were surprises on the spotlight for 30 minutes. First of all, the difference between the one with the Sony, even it's an hour, there were people on it explaining, explaining their game. Explaining the future of Nintendo. Case okay, in point is Pokemon. The president of Pokemon basically, yeah, even so he was just on his desk talking to the camera, to the fans, he said something that people wanted. Again, information. It's not just a trailer. Yeah, there's no trailer, sadly. Uh, the point of that one basically was they were promoting Pokemon Tournament DX again, like a little like snippet. I know there was a direct about it. But then the president of the president of Pokemon Company said Oh, we are starting working on a core Pokemon game for the Switch. So you need to say that Pokemon fans are happy. Good. And then AJ Yuma made an appearance, he basically promoting the DLC. And yes, there was a tree live, treehouse live about it, but he gave the gist of it of what's the DLC about. The first one he announced the date, June 30th. And then he also did a teaser for DLC number two, which is going to come in holiday 2017, and not only that, there will be a conjunction of amiibo coming for Breath of the Wild Wave two, which is four of them, which is the four champion that you seen them in the game. Somehow they'll play a big integral point for the second DLC for the expansion, the expansion pass. Again, there was the information he was talking about. Granted, it's not on the stage. Again, but at least they were talking about it. It was in front of the camera. He talked about the game. Okay, props to that one. Then a revelation that people listened to. The, they listened to the fan. They finally did it. Metroid Prime 4. Yes, it was only a, t a title teaser, but that enough. Basically, most of the Nintendo Hardcore fan and the Metroid fan said, "You gave us hope, finally." And of course, that's going to be from what I heard, 2018. But there you go. Metroid Prime 4. So again, information coming there. And then Reggie, I'm basically talking about eSport. Basically the gist of that one is that Nintendo is supporting eSport. That's really it. With that 30 minutes. So again, do I want to do it in a live conference? Sure. But with the spotlight, he actually did give information that people wanted to hear. People say, oh, great, I knew what the future of Nintendo. Sony, trailer, 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 you don't want to be talking about it. And then, if you, well, if you want to know about this game, then you have to watch PlayStation Live. Uh, like, really? I mean, no, well, we'll just wait for YouTube. Trust me. I can't, I mean, 
If the only game I like, I'll watch it, but of course it's going to be on YouTube. It's on their Sony channel. So, same goes with Microsoft, Xbox Daily, uh, Nintendo, Treehouse, they're on YouTube. So, for this one, I have to give the Sony, not Sony, the Nintendo Spotlight a 7 out of 10. Wait, wait, why? I mean, they gave information. I thought you love Nintendo. Yeah, like I said, it's not about the game. It's about the presentation. Again, it's not a live conference. What do you want me to say? And until they do a live conference like they did with the Switch, I can't give them a high score. But they did give inma information that people wanted. Awesome. But still, not a conference. I'm sorry. Just, oh, that's like, that's a medium thing. Like, no, because you go, you're talking behind the camera, you can just rehearse yourself, rehearse, and you don't have the people cheering for you, you're just there in the camera. In live conference, not only you want to make an announcement, you want people cheering for you. In case your point when E3 of 2013 with Sony, you showed the PlayStation 4 the first time. People were happy. Oh, you don't have to you don't have to authenticate use game. People were happy. PlayStation 4, the cost, people were happy. The date, they were happy. Yeah, I mean, they were sad with the uh, plus, but that's a different story. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to conference. I want the reaction after the announcement. And, yeah, they did a live conference for Sony for it, but the trailer, trailer, people like, uh, uh, ah, uh, uh, ah. Like, you know, the best part is when someone says something good, like, like, Phil Spencer basically announced the backs compatibility with the original Xbox, the very OG one. People were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I want to hear. That's why I love the conference. Because not only the announcement is good, but I want the people's reaction. The reaction for it. Because it tells that you're engaged. It tells that you're supporting fans. Nintendo, oh, well, you know, what if I don't like the people looking at me? Uh, uh, I'm too scared. So I'd rather just go to my secluded room and, and just do camera and rehearse there in the, behind a green screen. I'm like, whatever. Whatever, dude. So that's why it's a 7 out of 10. So the big question is who won E3 2017? And for this one, I have to say Microsoft. Because, like I said before, live conference, talk about it, there were announcements, there were reactions to the announcement. Some of the game I might not care, but they may be good. Again, you know, I, I a Sony fan. I like Sony, I like Nintendo, not so much with Microsoft, sorry. The only Microsoft I like is their always system the computer. You know, Windows 10 and stuff like that. But the conference was good. You know, love the reaction. I love their announcement. So yeah. 8 out of 10 for Microsoft. Um, 6 out of 10 for Sony, 7 out of 10 for Nintendo. So yeah, so Microsoft this year, congratulations. I just hope keep this up but you just have to have a good reason why you want to <coughs> what why should people get xbox one x five hundred dollars yeah good luck with that and a lot of people already said they even back to said it on twitter the price doesn't matter how powerful the console is if the games are not there and if the console's too expensive you nobody's gonna buy it case in point the wii u yeah nintendo gives you an hd but the thing was too expensive to what it offers. I know they had to do a price cut and they basically cried about it because they just said, yeah, well, it didn't really work for us. No. It is what it is. So, yeah, that's my review of E3 2017. Microsoft, congratulations. With that, listening, that's it for now. I'll see you guys later. Bye.